All right, so grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So a couple of years ago, I'm up at the font for a baptism. Little baby girl in her mother's arms, family and friends surrounding them with their bulletins, following along with you, the service. We, we're moving forward in the service. We're at the point where we, we tell the story, the amazing story of how water is one of the threads of salvation from creation all the way through the baptism of Jesus. And as we finish that story, it's called Luther's Flood Prayer. It's the way water just seems to be everywhere in the scripture. There's a tug on my robe, and I, you know, I thought maybe it got caught on something, but then it came harder and more insistent, and I looked down, and there's a little boy there. And the little boy happens to be the brother of the girl that we're baptizing, and he makes a signal to me that he needs me to come real close because he has to whisper because he's in church, you know. So I, I bend my head down, uh, and he says, Pastor Keith, are you Jesus? And he needed an answer, you know, he was waiting. So I said, no. But he's here. I had to finish the baptism. I couldn't get into a very long discussion with him. Are you Jesus? He asked. No, I said. But he's here. There was a man sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. And so the priests and the Levite, the religious authorities, they saw what was going on. They saw people flocking from the countryside and from the city, all of Jerusalem, going down to the river Jordan, to be baptized by this guy. And this guy was not your normal guy. This guy was dressed like the Old Testament prophets. This guy uh, ate locusts, ate grasshoppers, which I'm sure did not taste like chicken. But there he was. This is one strange dude. But the people were flocking to him. They were running into the river. They were confessing their sins to this perfect grasshopper-eating stranger. They were laying their sins at the river and rising from the water, repentant. And last week we talked about repentance. Repentance meaning turning from our way to God's way. Turning from our way to God's way, changing direction, repentance. And there the people were in the river, rising in repentant lives. And so we should not be surprised that the religious authorities would send some people to investigate this guy. Because they're wondering, you know, is this a, a prophet, another prophet of Israel? Is this the Messiah, God's anointed, that they've waited for for so many, many, many years? Or is it just another crackpot? Because they seem to be everywhere eating things like grasshoppers. But the people were flocking, so they had to investigate, and they refused to leave without an answer. Are you the Messiah? And John said, no, I'll confess right to you now, I'm not the Messiah. I baptize with water, John tells them, but one stands among you who you do not know, the one coming after me, and I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. Are you Jesus? asked the little boy. No, 
but he's here. The conversation ended there. But this is the thing that we have to realize as followers of Jesus. We have to understand that John proclaims that the Messiah is among them, that the Messiah is present. We could imagine them putting their hands on their eyes and scanning the horizon, looking around and, and saying to themselves, like, you know, there's, well, there's Erlene and, and there's Diane and there's Marge and, and Bob and Bill and Ray and Patsy. Where's Jesus? They said he was here among us, but we did not know. John the Baptist points to the one among them who they didn't know. But friends, in our own baptism, you and I have been buried with Jesus and raised with him. We die to ourselves so that we can live for Christ. And you and I have the privilege of Answering the question, where is Jesus? So that when the little boys tug your sleeve, when your neighbor sits down with you, when your friend is on the phone, when you meet that stranger on the street corner, and you know they need to know where Jesus is, you can show them where. You know where Jesus is. Martin Luther tells us that you and I are little Christ to each other. We're not Jesus, but we can point people to Jesus as little Christs in every act of compassion and grace and selfless love, in, in every act of peacemaking and forgiveness and every work of justice. People see Christ in us. That's what it means to be little Christ. It means doing for the neighbor, doing for the stranger. To be a little Christ means that when people look at you, they see you, but they see something deeper. They see Christ in you. You pointing them in your compassion and your forgiveness and your patience in your selfless love. They see Christ in you. So they don't have to ask if you're Jesus. You've already spoken to them through your heart. They know where Jesus is because they see Jesus in you. Jesus is wherever there is brokenness, wherever there is hurt, wherever there is pain, wherever there is suffering. And Jesus speaks through your hand through your words, through your hearts, and through the magnificent power of the Holy Spirit is present in a broken world. Could you imagine what kind of God would trust us with the privilege of pointing people to Christ through our own spirit-filled actions and words trusts us as we are. That sounds pretty intimidating, doesn't it? Are you Jesus? No. But he's here, present. And when we truly manifest the power and spirit of God 
in our compassion and forgiveness and selfless love and peacemaking and works of justice. They won't even have to ask. Every encounter you're going to have when you leave today, every relationship that you renew and form, tomorrow, next week, for the rest of your life, is an opportunity for people to see Jesus in you. Will you dare to show people Jesus? Will you be bold enough for people to see Christ in you? Will you take on that privilege and responsibility that God has entrusted in your hands? Look at your hands right now. Look at your hands. Because those are the hands that God has placed trust to be Christ for the world. Those hands, fresh or scarred, calloused or polished, hairy or smooth, those hands God has entrusted to be Christ in the world. Not once, not yesterday, but now and when you leave every encounter, every relationship for the rest of your life. And when we fail, and we will, we will, the amazing thing is that Christ will be there to receive our confession and to forgive and to renew and to send us back out into the world with these same hands again and again and again. Because Christ doesn't give up on us, but uses us for a hurting and broken world. So will you dare to show people Jesus? Will you be bold enough for people to see Christ in you, in the world? Because sooner or later, you're going to walk through those doors and the world is going to be waiting. Amen.